Hi everyone, Anshita this side. Welcome back to EV Automation Hub. In today's video, we are going to learn about Git and GitHub. We will learn how to create a new project in GitHub. What are the basic commands which are used and what is a Git workflow? So first of all, let's understand the difference between Git and GitHub. So Git is a distributed version control system, which is open source and free to use. So using Git, you can actually track the changes in your source code during your software development or during your automation framework development. Whereas GitHub is a web-based platform which allows you to upload your files for collaboration and project management. So now let's see how to create a new project in GitHub. So for creating a new project on GitHub, what do you have to do? You have to create an account first. So go to the official website of GitHub and sign up with your email. If you do not have an account, if you already have an account, you can sign into your account and go to your repository section. Click on this new button and enter a name for your repository. I will write over here project AB. In the description, you can pass the valid description over here. So I will write it like this. Fine. Next come the visibility section. You want to keep it as public or private, you can select that. Then comes the readme section. So this is very important for the project documentation. If any new joiner comes to your project and by just going through the readme, they can understand what is the repo about. And now just click on the create repository. Now we have created our first project in GitHub. Now let's clone the repository to our local machine. So for that, what we will do, just click on this one code and, and copy this URL. Now let's understand from the organization perspective, how this is used. In most of the cases, the repo is already created. What you have to do, you have to clone it into your local machine. If it is not created, you can follow the same steps to create a repo first, and then you can start cloning it on your local machine. Now we have already copied this go to terminal and let's clone it. So over here, in order to clone it, you have to use the command git clone and paste the copied URL. So this is our first command, which we are going to use. What it will do? So this will copy the content of the project on your local machine. Just click on enter and now it's done. So the next step is open your editor so you can access this project. I'll be using VS code over here. So I just open this project in my VS code. Now I have cloned this on my local machine. So as of now we have used one command which is get clone. Now what we will do, let's say you are an automation engineer and you have to contribute to this repo. You have to add a new test case. For that, we will create new file. But when you work in an organization, you do not contribute directly to the main branch. It is not a good practice. For that, companies follow PR process. What is PR process? PR is basically pull request in which you create a branch, you add your changes to that branch, and other people review that branch, and then they merge it into the master. So this is what happens in an organization. In order to create a branch, what you have to do, go to your terminal and over here, you have to use the command git checkout hyphen V and the branch name. So you can pass any name over here, but if you want to follow good practice, what you have to do, so let's say you're using Jira in your organization. So you have multiple tasks, which is assigned to you. For example, in this print, you have to automate the login page, right? You will have a task created in Jira. So the best practice is to pass the same branch name as your Jira task name. So for example, over here, I have a sample project. This is a task created. This is just for the demo purpose. So what you can do, you can just copy the task name, which is this one, can one, and go to your terminal, enter the same name over here. So what it will do, it will show in the Jira also, this is a PR link to this task. So this is how engineers work in an organization. Now we have cloned the project on our local machine and we have created a branch. Now you can see we are on different branch. Earlier it was made. Now it's scan one. Okay. Now what we will do, let's make changes to our project and then we will push our code. So for the demo purpose, let's do one thing. Let's install Playwright in this project and then we will push our code. So to install Playwright, what you have to do? You have to just enter this command npm init Playwright at latest. So let's choose TypeScript and test. Fine. Now this is created and you can see project got added over here. Now we have some files on our local machine. The next step is to add these changes to your remote, which still doesn't have anything, right? In order to add this file onto your remote repository, we will use git command for that. In order to see what all the changes which you have done, we will use the command git status. So git status basically specifies 
which all the files which you have added. So like git ignore, package log JSON, package JSON, all these files are added, trip, which is not there on remote repository. Now, once you have identified what are the files, next step is you want to add these files. So for adding these files, what you have to do, we will use the command git add. So if you want to add all the files, you can use git add space dot like this. But in case, if you just want to add one or two files, what you can do, you can just copy the file name like this and pass it like this. For example, I just want to add package log.json and playwrightconfig.ts. So I will add like this. And then if we do git status, so now it will tell you only these files are not included and these files are already added. The next command we are going to use is git add dot. By using git add dot, all my files would be added. So when we use this command git add, what happens is a staging phase. We call it staging phase or index. And in this phase, the code changes are ready to be finalized. So you are on your working directory. And now in order to add some changes to the staging area, we are using this command, which is git add. Now the next command which we are going to use is git commit hyphen m. And we have to pass message over here. I will just pass playwright test. Now by using this command, what will happen? Git commit basically creates a snapshot of your staging area and save it in the local repo. So I have created a sample workflow diagram so you can understand better. So let me show you that. So this is a workflow diagram. What happens in a Git workflow? So first of all, you are in your working directory where you add code, where you add files or make some changes. So once you use git add command, then you enter in this phase, which is staging area or index. Now, in order to add this files to the local repository, you have to use the command git commit hyphen m message. In order to add to the remote repository, we have to use the command git push. So this is the git workflow in which your changes are in working directory. And once you add some files, it goes to a staging area. And once you commit that, it goes to local repository. And in order to upload all these files on the remote, you have to use the command git push. Now we have done git commit. And if we still see over here on the remote, if I refresh, you will see there is nothing added as of now. Fine, because we are still at the local repository. We haven't moved our files to the remote repository. Okay, what we have done, we have added our file, we have committed our file. The last step is we want to push our files. Fine. For that, what we will do, let me just clear it. We will use the command git push. So now what we have done, we have created a branch and all our changes are added into that branch. We have not pushed our changes into the main branch directly. We have created a PR branch. Now what you can do, the next step is you have to create a pull request on GitHub. For that, what you can do, just copy this URL from here. And now if you refresh here on the remote repo, you will see two branches. One is the main branch, which is a default branch. Whenever you create a repo, there is default branch, which is the main branch. And this is the new branch, which we just created, right? Now just paste the copied URL and you can create a pull request. So you can pass a title. So it automatically takes your commit message as a title, but you can edit it as well. So let me edit it. And I will write over here, demo playwright test. And you can add a detailed description about your PR. So whoever is going to review, so they can check the summary from here and they can understand what your PR is about and click on this create pull request. If you want to attach screenshots, you can attach screenshots over here. If you want to attach some link, you can attach links also. Fine. And now over here you can assign it to multiple people. So for example, in your project, there are five or six members working. You can assign it to them. And once they review, they can approve your PR. So generally in an organization, there is a rule in which you cannot merge directly into the main branch until it is reviewed by other members because this is the best practice. Let's say you are a software developer and you are merging your code directly into the main branch without getting reviewed. So it's a big risk. So this is what happens in a real-time project in any organization. For example, now your PR is reviewed by other member and, and now the next step is you have to merge your pull request. So until now, if you see your remote repository, you see, there's nothing added over it except the readme file. But now if you will merge your code, you will see all this six files 
which you added, it will be added on the main branch also. So these are the files which you added on your local repository and it got added over here. And this tab shows you the commit history. This is your commit ID. Now, let's do one thing. Let's just merge our pull request, confirm on merge. And now this is merged successfully. Now, if you go to your project and let's say we refresh it, you see, all the files got added over here successfully. Now, this is what happens in a real-time project. There's a main branch. Other members create different branches out of it, work on their branches, create a pull request, and then assign it to the team members for the review. If it gets reviewed by everyone, you can merge successfully. And on the main branch, you can see your changes. And now if you go to your Jira task also, you would see there is on the right section under the GitHub integration, you would see your branch getting appeared over here and it is also showing the updated status. In most of the organizations, there is already a GitHub integration with the Jira. And when you create a branch with the same name, it appears over here and you can also see the status of the task. Fine. So now end to end, you will get an idea how in an organization you create a project, how you make changes to the project and how you push your changes to the remote repository. Fine. And in the Jira also, you can track it like this. So this is how you can track, how you can maintain and how you work in a real-time project. Today, we have covered how to create a repository on GitHub. Use the basic git commands. We have seen how we can use git clone command to clone the project. Use git add command, git commit and git push. So make sure you practice it because the more you use git, the more comfortable you will become with it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.